Hi, this is Sasha Chua. Hi, I'm Douglas. Okay, sorry about that. I was experimenting with some technical capabilities of this platform. Thanks for joining early. Yeah, it's nice to test everything before for the the actual ring out. Yeah, for sure. I this is my first time experimenting with this. So I don't really have an idea of exactly how it will work out, but maybe everyone will help me learn how to make the most of this and make sure it's something useful for people as well. So tell me a little bit more about what got you interested in this. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Oh, tell, tell me what got you interested in, in coming to this. What do you want uh. to have? Uh, I found a post about uh, the Emax uh, Emax cheat sheet. <laughs> uh, from there, I went to your blog and then I saw a lot of notes, uh, drawing notes in a very nice way. And uh, that post you will do about uh, about life in general, about how to achieve things. So I started following your blog, then I saw this Hangout, and there was a webinar also, but it was in a time where I, uh, I was at work here. Because here in Brazil, it was in the middle of the afternoon, something mm -hmm. like that. But when I, I saw yeah. the Hangout, it was at night. Uh, yeah, I've just posted the recording and my notes from that webinar, so you can easily review it if you want to. It was a lot of fun. I gave a short presentation and using Evernote. Oh, nice. Yeah. Also, I joined the public notebook in Evernote. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, I really like the way Evernote lets you search through images, so I, I'm glad it's easy to put things out there. Yeah. I, I take a lot of notes in Evernote, too, because of that. Uh, you can put every... Uh, every kind of document and uh, Evernote search through them. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna uh, go ahead. Big up my headphone. For sure. Uh, I'm gonna set up my uh, kind of kickoff picture. <laughs> we have notes already. Uh, oh. Okay. <laughs> blog as well? Uh, I'm trying to, but I, I was writing some something about my experience in, a, in hackathons, but uh, I'm not posting frequently. Uh, That's okay. In fact, uh, this week I started redesigning my blog because I use uh, Twitter Bootstrap and uh -huh. I, I would like to, to have a custom, custom design. Uh, I hope to to uh, begin blogging again. Uh, most of my my posts are fairly technical ones. Uh, I use them most as a, a motivation to study. Uh, when I have something I want to learn, and then I study and blog that. Or sometimes I I like to give talks. And yeah. I use the blog to to link to my talks uh, as well. Yeah, yeah, that's really helpful. It's a great way to to help you as you're learning things, and then when you're sharing it, it means that your presentations, you know, you don't just spend four hours preparing for one presentation. It becomes a blog post that helps lots of other people as well. Yeah, one thing I tried to experiment uh, recently, uh, uh, not so recently, but Hi. Uh, is when I write uh, an email to a group, uh, Google Groups, for instance, and it, the email starts to get longer, I say, oh, so uh, uh, everybody else can benefit from this answer. Then I transform it in a blog post. Yes, absolutely. All right, we've got a couple of other people. Oh. Hello, I'm Sasha Hello. Chua. Welcome. Uh, hello. Great. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you just fine. 
Okay, I'm Danielle. Nice to meet you. Uh, we met at uh, in London. Oh yeah, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, let's see. Yes. And Phil, I see that you've joined the call as well. Yes. Hello. Hi. I was just. Hi. Yeah, I was just telling Douglas this is totally an experiment for me. I don't really know how these things work out, but I figured it's probably a good idea to get to know people and 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 to do the kind of Q and A and conversation that's sometimes you don't get a chance to do with blogs and blog comments. So um, very cool. I'd love to know what got you interested in coming to this, so I can make sure that we make you know we get to all those things and you can use either the video chat or you can use a text chat there's an icon and the right on the left there which I'll also start up uh, well to be honest uh, I'm not exactly sure what to expect um, but the brief description uh, that you posted sounded interesting so I just figured I'd jump on and check it out <laughs> all right and Danielle well, um, I, I, uh, I mean, I, um, I'm interested in all things uh, Emacs. So, um, I've I've seen uh, the event advertised uh, on Google Plus, and I've met you in uh, in the conference in London, uh, the the first Emacs conference. So um, I always appreciate your uh, your contributions. So I, I just uh, thought, hey, why not? I, I'm going to join in, even if it's 3, three o'clock uh, uh, in the morning here. <laughs> but I'm not sleeping, actually. <laughs> 3 in the morning. <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much. I, I, I do plan to uh, to try different time zones, because it would be silly to just leave it to one time zone that's you know convenient for me, and I have a flexible schedule yeah. anyway. So if you do want to get some rest, it's OK. <laughs> Sure, no problem. I might, I might drop out. But uh, anyway, I'm, I'm, an, I'm a night bird, and I like to, uh, to work at yeah. night. So it's... Yeah. So, uh, so welcome more people. Um, it, it, this again, this is an experiment. The people who have heard this introduction can go and use the text chat if they want to. Uh, I, I'm basically curious about what, 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 what might happen if we have more of these conversations instead of just me posting stuff in the blog and people asking stuff in the comments. Uh, Tell me, tell me what you're curious about, or what I can, uh, what I can help you learn, or what we can learn together, and other things that are on your mind. Uh, I think there's a limit of like ten people for the video chat, but the group chat is like wide open, and it lets other people to talk, even if you're not, you know, instead of waiting for other people to finish talking. So I am totally okay with paying attention to both video and um, text chat. I'd love to find out what got you interested in in coming to this, and what you want to get out of it so that we can make sure to cover those spaces uh, and I'd love to hear yeah I just I'd love to get to know you and and find out what I can do to help hello Trevor <laughs> and a couple of other people have joined hi Pat and hi Clinton wow this is so hi <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool hello. I'm going to try to not freak out about this. Uh, I, I'm telling myself, <laughs> okay. okay, I'm an introvert, but this is virtual, so it's okay. And, you know, friends, so okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The same way. <laughs> yeah. Treat, treat it as an informal discussion conversation. Yeah. I, I realized, like, with, when I started asking people questions about how I can how I can make this blog better, right? Because I love writing, and it's it's always so much more fun when you're writing with other people's questions or you're doing things that help other people out. When I started asking people, I guess what they what they liked about the blog and how I could make it better, I really loved being able to hear from people. So I'm I'm all for that conversation and uh, and learning from the things you know learning about the things that I might not even know to ask you about yet. So hi. <laughs> okay, so since everyone is waiting for other people to speak up, text chat might be useful. <laughs> oh, we can do it in some some others. Uh, I don't know if you see uh, below the video, uh, and it, you say. Uh, the name of the person asking them to answer in order. So we can start, for instance, with Clinton. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Clinton. Um, I have followed uh, 
Sasha's blog for years, mainly because I'm a I'm a programmer and have a shared interest in in uh, Emacs. But I I have tried many many times to start a blog and fallen off. And I thought, well, this seems really interesting. Why not show up and, and just see what other people have to to say about you know how how they keep it going. Oh yeah, that sounds like a it's it's a it's an obstacle really that a lot of people run into. Uh, has anyone struggled with that? Because I clearly have fallen off the wagon of falling off the wagon of blogging. Cause I, just, I just do it; it's part of the way I do things. But who else has stopped and started? I've had a very on-off relationship with my blog as well. What helps? Yeah, that's the same for me too. Um, I I I have a. Um... I have a blog, um, but I, I, I noticed that um, my frequency of of, um, of of posting is related to the ease of public publishing and posting. And uh, until not so far, uh, until recently, I was on this um, posterous blog, um, and and maybe you know it's a, it's a platform for blogging which uh, which was supposed to. To be very easy, uh, it it was not that bad, but uh, it um, it shut down in May, yeah. and it forced everybody out. And then I decided that's it. I'm going to blog with um, with Emacs. So uh, I wanted to uh, to write uh, in org mode and then have a one click um, um, publishing um, action. Uh, and, and I've been working on this, um, and uh, and I finished it um, uh, last week, and uh, it's great. And I have two new posts <laughs> on my blog. I'm going to type it here. Uh, oh no, Douglas just told me that if it's after 10 people, which I think we are at, then other people can't join. Mm -hmm. How do I fix this? Has anyone else done this thing with Google? Hangouts before. Is there a way for me to to quickly turn it into an on-air one? Uh, I don't know. I I think you have to start the hangout as hangout on air, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure what what's the what the option is. Okay, keep talking, and I will figure that out, and then I will start a new one at some point, very soon. <laughs> <laughs> and then it generates a YouTube link. You can post it. Uh, on the event page. Okay, watch me panic. This is my panicking phase. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, start hang out on air. This is okay. We can do this. People are, are, are you know, are forgiving and they understand that people are human. Here we go. So I, I have a question. This yeah? is my first hangout. And does the, on your desktop, when somebody's talking, does it, does it automatically switch to their face? Uh, I, 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 I set it to, to show, uh, whatchamacallit, to show a picture. I think I'm just okay. about the start of a Google Hangout on air. So hang on a second, I'm, I'm gonna, well, we're going all the way to close this. Well, I'm gonna post the new URL in the, uh, the, the place, the thing. I asked the question okay. because it's on my, uh, where, where I'm, what I can see, is it looks like uh, every time somebody else starts talking, it switches to their oh. screen, which I thought was very cool. Awesome. In that case, <laughs> yes. that is yes. really awesome. Okay. Yes, this yes, is the hangout is set to switch. Okay. All right, folks. We are going to transfer the new URL is in the whatchamacallit, okay? <laughs> Google Hangouts. Uh, I think... I'm gonna. If I close this, we should be all right, right? Uh, where is, one of these windows is the right window. Close. We are. You disappear. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm closing the window. Okay, We're gonna see everyone soon. We're gonna see everyone soon. Testing, testing. Ah, okay, good. Somebody else made it in. <laughs> that worked. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, that means I need to change the. Okay, all right. This this is great. I am learning lots of interesting things. I just have to make sure everyone else makes it in. 
Uh, not panicking, not panicking, not panicking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a, one more person. All right, this is this is this is fantastic. Uh, yeah, we'll survive. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> okay. Oh, nice. no. okay, this is good. All right, so uh, so uh, disasters are easily recoverable from. <laughs> hey, Sasha. Uh, yes. This is uh, I I see this is. Possible to be hang out on air, but showing off air. Uh, okay, the... okay, good point. Start broadcast. Here Up we go. Corner. Click OK. <sighs> See, what would I do without all these, you know, uh, the people with more experience and uh, more observational skills? This is great. So, uh, there's okay. a start broadcast button. Okay, I think we're and... online now. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Douglas is like an expert. Douglas is an expert here on this. Now I know who to call to ask about uh, how to do hangouts. It's, Doug it's Douglas. <laughs> All right. So before we we got into that, we were talking about. Ha hang on. Um. I, apparently, I I can't remember things when I'm panicking. So what were we talking about? <laughs> it, it was the on again, off again nature of blogging and what was helping people when they were getting going again or what they they found that they did that helped um, and I was actually thinking about this today uh, and because um, I felt like I needed to write a blog post but I really didn't want to and and so I, there was this uh, you know battle that I was waging with myself and so I actually went online and just started reading blogs I read some of your blog I read some other blogs that I read and 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 I it developed the desire to read to write and so then I went and wrote and I, and I just really enjoyed the blog post that I wrote today so so to me it's uh, you know it's going and learning some things then causes me to want to share some things. Does that help? Does that help? Definitely. Okay, next uh, thing that here, people are curious about. <laughs> no. What else do you want to do? Uh, oh, oh no! Okay, ah, temporary. Uh, Hello. One of the challenges yeah. I have mm -hmm. uh, can everyone not talking put the microphone in mute because it's, go it's, uh, it's having some, some echo. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, the the voice from uh, it's echoing back in the microphone from everybody, so it's hard to to hear, to understand the, uh, everyone talking. Uh, there's a mute button in the upper right corner, so uh, when you need to talk, you um, mute talk, then mute again, please. Followed by dead silence. <laughs> okay, I wasn't sure if uh, I had gotten a, a slot here on the on, on chatting. Um, one of the challenges I face is that I am hampered by the thought that it is better to remain silent and thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. And so, when I write, um, it's a challenge because I'm always I'm just kind of worried about that that that, that, that scenario. Uh, the other problem I have with writing is that blog formats are, are wrong for me. I love writing short story fiction. Uh, I'd love to use blogs as a mechanism for publishing that, but blogs are exactly the wrong format for presenting this, these this short stories. So I'm kind of thinking, um, uh, yeah, just how would you address something like that, or what are people's thoughts on that? So the way I tend to think of it is, you know, if if I if I have a misconception or I'm doing something wrong or I have code with like really bo annoying bugs in them, I'd rather know about it, which is why I'm okay with posting works in progress and things I'm trying to figure out, and things about which I'm completely wrong and will be schooled on by wonderful wonderful readers. Uh, so that's what works for me.
Um, and for me, what I would say is explore, like you don't have to use these blogging platforms in that linear format, like that article, article, article format. You can use them to create the short stories and then just do links between them. So if you're using WordPress, use pages or go to like one of the weedy, uh, wikis, like MediaWiki, and don't do a blog, do a wiki instead. And then you can write your short stories and still think of them in discrete chunks because that will help you write faster, um, but do it as a, a serial in that way. Right. Um, um, if I was going to do serial form, you're right, because one of the things I've, I've had a problem with in blogs is that it tells the story in the wrong order. People see the last chapter first, and that's, that's always kind of a problem. Um, and that's kind of like, I don't like giving away the ending, you know what I mean? It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a conceit that most writers have. Um, but at the same time, um, where I am doing some other writing, where I've done a little bit of blogging, is in the issue of uh, handicap accessibility and speech-driven programming. So I've got, I lost the use of my hands. See things little here. They uh, they look fine, but there actually is serious nerve pain, nerve damage going on all the time. So I can no longer type well. I use speech recognition. And I like writing code, so I've been doing some blogging of that work that I've done. And I'm hoping within about a week, I'll be releasing a video of how that all works. Um, but again, that's where a blog would work for me well. But that's again, that's a third topic I'm sort of addressing is is handicap accessibility for blog creation. So. And uh, yes, I know about that Python thing. I can tell you horrible things about things he's doing with grammar, and the way that the the user interface on it and all. And um, well, I got 20 years scar tissue on this, so <laughs> I have a lot of opinions. But anyway, uh, but thank you for the ideas about using a wiki and merely using the blog to announce chapters and updates, and that way I can control the formatting of, of stories in in the side of that blog. Okay, thank you. I'll turn it over to whoever else wants to go next. I'm done. Hi, uh, Trevor. Uh, you said about using wikis and nonlinear blogs. Uh, one one thing I really like about blogs is the possibility of having feeds, uh, RSS feeds, so uh, I can I don't have to to open the, the blog to read them. I can just subscribe in a in a feed reader such as the soon to be dead Google Reader. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, but in a media, uh, in a weak format, I don't know if this is possible. Uh, anyone has some experience on that? You you can have feeds on a wiki that show like the most recent updates. It I don't think I think it would be some work to make it look quite as nice as it does for a blog, but you could. Um, yeah, you can definitely do that, though. Oh, thanks. I just want to say that I really, I, I really actually like this format. It's kind of like having everyone over for coffee or tea at my house, and people are talking, and I'm listening, and well, in real life, I would be cooking something else because you know, never stop cooking. Um, but yes, this is great. Keep on going. <laughs> I would have I'd have to agree with that because I love I, I love the way we have people making comments on the side, which is great. Uh, as great feedback uh, feedback on what other folks are saying. I love hearing other people talk. And yes, uh, Sasha, like you, I would be cooking all the time. I suffer from Mama Bird syndrome. That if you're not, if I can't stuff food in your mouth, you must not be hungry. <laughs> It's like here, eat this. Here, try that. Um, and so um, it's a it's a it's a occupational hazard of liking to cook, I guess. But anyway, yes, I agree with you on this thing. Eric brought up something, and and I don't want to ask too many questions because there's lots of people here. But Eric brought up something that that I've come across several times. Um, I'm a person with a lot of diverse interests. I'm a programmer, but I also like write games. I, I do all these different things, and Every time I start a blog, I end up feeling like, oh, this isn't the appropriate place for this because this blog is about this. But then, I, you know, I've had points where I've had five blogs about different things, and then I don't write on any of them because that's overwhelming. And so, like, is it better to keep your blog focused, or is it better to 
just make a shotgun approach. Talk about whatever you feel like talking about, whether it be tech or you know adoption. As you can probably tell from my example, I just dump everything into one place. So far, this seems to be working. Uh, categories uh, might categories help. Categories might help. So I, I use two approaches. Like I have one blog, like the decision that's just focused on the decision stuff, and my goal there is to build an audience. And then I've got my personal blog, which goes all over the place. And my goal there is just to express myself. So I would think it depends upon your goal. If you want to build an audience, being focused often helps. I mean, Tasha's been doing it a long time, so you can build an audience over a very long period of time going all over the place. Um, but I think if you want to build something quickly, go, go focus. But if you want to represent yourself, show your variety. That's a good point. Um, from my perspective, I would say uh, for a, a professional blog, you want to keep it focused on things that you want professional people to see. For example, uh, my blog, I've got, I started a year ago and I kind of let die. Uh, had some of my notes about the use, speech user interfaces. But then if you look at my Facebook stuff, well, um, snarky political commentary, uh, music I found, etc. All the kind of the fun things we enjoy is it resides there, and I'm going to probably have to delete it when I start looking for work again. But yeah, it's a occupational hazard. Um, but so I, I'd also go by using tagging or some other form of way of uh, organizing information by threads. So my personal bias. Yeah, I've, uh, I have a blog where all of the different topics are just thrown in there and uh, I've been thinking actually recently about organizing it, uh, keeping it all in one blog but just organizing it so that, um, uh, you know, specific topics are listed in specific uh, areas to go and, and uh, for those people that are interested in those topics. If there's anybody that's interested, if there's not, that's fine too. Um, so one thing to jump in, if you are doing the, if you want to have multiple different categories, one way of doing it is there's ways to create category feeds. So if someone's only interested in one of the topics you're writing about, they can subscribe just to the feed on that topic. And you could do the same thing, I think, with um, the, the feed to email. So if someone wants to subscribe to email, it makes your email subscription form a little more complicated, but you could just do it to where someone could subscribe just to the topics they're interested in, which is often the dilemma people run into when they have stuff. I mean, categories are the, are the way to do it, but um, that, that's one way to help people consume when they are only interested in one of your categories that you publish. Well, that's good. I'll have to look for that because I, I wonder about the people that I have subscribed to email that are getting these you know, email notifications that I've put out a blog, and it's they're completely different topics. And Sasha does that, and I kind of like seeing the different stuff that she's doing, and, and that's, that's so for me, I like that. But, but I'm sure some people are going, okay, I follow this guy because he's a runner and I'm a runner. Why is he sending me this stuff about lean manufacturing today? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been experimenting with using the category feeds plus uh, a mailing list and but like feed burner or something like that, so that you you can give people you know a, a mailing list just for running blog posts if they really don't care about the once in a blue moon posts about other things. Uh, you can experiment with it. It's it's uh it's possible. Yeah, I'm gonna work on that. What what else do people want to to dig into or learn more about, or also what can I do to make this blog better for you? Keep posting. <laughs> yeah, keep posting. <laughs> it, so, oh, also, I'm experimenting with uh, making my own URL shortener. So this is very exciting for me because I got really tired of typing out Sasha Chu or living an awesome, even more characters, living an awesome life dot com. So I've got a blog post coming out tomorrow, which is kind of like, do I use Sasha, like Sasha C S A C H dot A C? 
or do I use liv.gd? <laughs> Too many, you know, too many choices. This is tough. Uh, I'll put it in the chat so people can actually visualize what this looks like. <laughs> anyway, esoteric questions, but yes. How do people uh, time box uh, or sort of set aside, you know, how much time during a day or a week or are people kind of more free flowing as ideas come and do people generally write drafts and come back to them after time or do people kind of sit down in a furious burst and just spit out a post? Just kind of curious, you know, what... Um, uh, habits and styles and things that people use to, you know, keep going and keep motivated, that sort of thing. Well, I'm probably the worst person to talk about motivation for the stuff, but when I write, I write because there's something burning a hole in my brain, um, and I have to get it out. And then it's in a big burst, I write, 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 and then I let it sit in the drawer for some period of time, and then I come out with, you know, then I can revise it and then publish it. Um, I'm not really good at the write some, write the, write the final draft in the first copy. So uh, I have to let it sit. Also because I remember I'm hampered by speech recognition. Uh, when it makes errors, it's not typos. It's words that look like they kind of sort of make sense in the context. So you don't notice it until a day or two later when you've forgotten what you've written and then it and then stands out at you. So that's one of the, the fun joys I have. I'm with you as the uh, kind of, you sit down and you've got this burning desire to say something, and so I usually write all my blog posts in one go, and then since people are generally forgiving of typos, I publish it very shortly after. Actually, technically, I, I schedule it for one of those days and it comes out. So if I change my mind in the two or three days before it appears, I can change things. And then sometimes I then just have lots of drafts and uh, drafts snippets, snippets piling up in my Evernote or Emacs. Someone is. I, I have to. I'll go find out who's not. Me. <laughs> well, Sasha, what the, what sort of lead time do you use? You know, when you publish your drafts, uh, like sort of set them in advance. Do you do like a week or? Oh wait, sorry. I muted the wrong person. Phil, was that you speaking? Oh, I keep getting muted. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I was just asking what uh, what sort of your time frame for scheduling to uh, sit on a post before you decide to publish it. Uh, it's based. Um, uh, it's basically uh, I I plan things out so that it appears one like one post each day, and if it so happens that. The next week already has stuff in it, sometimes I'll shuffle it around, so my timeline is really mostly dictated by that. Except when I get super excited and then I end up posting three posts in one day. I take the slightly different approach that I have, none of my stuff is time critical, okay? Uh, it's very, very long horizon type of writing. And unless it's snarky political commentary, it, which takes 15 seconds to throw out, um, like the, the line about the NSA, you know, the NSA is the only part of the government that truly listens. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, it, it's, it's like, that's like, quips like that are thrown out, you know, it's, it's you know, it's, uh, are very, very quick, but, you know, but if it's, if it's something I'm thinking about, I'll take like two to three weeks to write a piece, you know, because I want to make sure it's framed the right way. And uh, so for me, like I say, it depends on what time rising. If you're working with something that's, that's timely, that something that has, relates to something that's happening, then yeah, you want to get done fast. But if it's like long horizon stuff, it's the schedule, if it's how you write, is better to get it to get something done rather than trying to force yourself to some arbitrary time frame. Because I guess we're, I think one of the conclusions we have here is um, uh, we have is, is that or our conversation pieces that we're, we're working with here is. is Keep writing, keep publishing, keep your blog alive, and whatever works for you as a writing vehicle is what counts. The blog is just the final step. I'm, I'm with you on this. Um, I have uh, totally unstructured um, 
uh, workflow, uh, and and yet things things are getting done. So I'm not touching it. I'm actually the opposite of Sasha, um, with, with regards of these tools. Um, uh, I, I, I am really impressed by your um, ability and desire to um, to organize everything, um, and. And, and because I'm I'm not like that. I don't organize anything. I just um, if if a block if an idea is ready, then I will I will ra I will sit down and, and write it. Uh, actually, org mode. I use org mode a lot. It's it's my central um, um, uh, piece in my workflow. But I I don't use any of of its um, organizing abilities. I'm using org mode as a free flow free format. Um, Piece of, of software that lets me um, write in in a in a in a markup in org mode markup, um, and I organize my my um, all my all, all my drafts are in one one single um, folder, um, which I have um, which I access with def mode, and and I just start start typing things uh, f freely, and when I feel I have something uh, brewing. Then I will I will start. Um, if an idea is sorry. Okay. Then then I will start. Uh, I will I will continue editing it, and when it's ready, I publish it. Um, I'm actually obsessed with workflow. Uh, I, I would really uh, I would be interested to hear what what are your workflows? How do you how do you write, uh, and how do you get it published? And is it is there any aspect of this workflow that sits in the way? Uh, and for reference, I want to uh, paste in the chat box a very uh, who, who who writes about um, his uh, his his writing tools and workflow. Oh. I think I think everybody knows here. Here, I mean, we are. I suppose everybody's a Emacs user or not. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, about the, uh, diverse crowd. not everybody. <laughs> not everybody. Okay. Uh, but, and everybody, I'm a big fan. <laughs> is there anybody who writes with a, um, a software, a word word type software where uh, um, uh, Writing is 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 compounded with uh, formatting, or not? I do that kind of by accident. In other words, the editors that work with speech recognition tools are, by very nature, more complicated word processors. Uh, just because that's what Nuance supports. I really hate it. I wish I could write um, in a much lighter weight editor, but nothing really works well with speech rec. You know, except like Microsoft Word, it's really horrible. But did you see what Sasha posted uh, about uh, speech recognition? This link uh, of of this guy who who uses uh, Emacs and Python to uh, to code in Emacs. Yes, yes, oh, okay. I have seen that. I have seen that. The problem is, he's. I could eat up an awful lot of time with this, and I apologize. So I'll try and make it quick. Um, in speech recognition, you don't want to touch the keyboard. You want to be able to say everything. There's something called select and say mode, where you can say a sentence. For example, I could say, select, I actually write a lot with, of my posts. And that would highlight it as a selected region, and then be able to, to uh, you correct it uh, you know, to, for recognition error, or to be able to change it to something else. Virtually, I think you can count on one hand after an industrial accident the number of editors that can do that. Mm. Okay, and so Emacs used to be able to do that, but because of a pissing contest between Stallman and the handicapped community, it no longer works. Really? Um, yeah. And if uh, I guess that's another long story, but basically there was something called VR mode for Emacs, which allowed Split to say to work, but because it's a proprietary package connected to Emacs, uh, you can sort of see where the pissing contest erupted. You now getting support for that. Okay. Um, but do you? So write, anyway, do you write do you write? Uh, can you write Emacs Lisp? Can you? No, no, I don't oh. know Lisp. The parentheses are, are hell on your hands and worse on your voice. <laughs> okay, it's it seemed that this guy has sold had, had everything sold. Uh, 
if, if you saw his screencast where he explained how he's dealing with um, speech recognition and Emacs and, and, and Python. Yeah. But yeah, like I say, I, I'm doing that now. I've got a tool which is called the uh, toggle name, which converts English strings into code names based on mm -hmm. data, you know, uh, stored persistence of information, and it, it does a very nice transformation in bulk or in individual. So anyway, um, I don't want to get too far down the path, way off the blogging path. So um, we, can, we can talk about that later if you want. Sure, sure. Yeah, that should be a separate hangout, you know, Eric bitching about handicap accessibility. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's along the lines of the prior question, but um, I uh, <laughs> I use Vim. Sorry, uh, feel free to throw things, but uh, I tend to write uh, in a mostly Markdown style. Um, because I find that a lot of the even basic blog engines can parse it, and if I want to repurpose that content elsewhere, it's pretty easy with Pandoc or something else to repurpose it to some other format. And it's enough structure that um, mentally and visually, you know, the structure of the document while I'm writing, kind of breaking things up with basic bulleting or using hash marks for uh, headers and things like that yeah. um, gives it a little bit of style and separation, <clears throat> but not too, too much. And I feel like if I ever decided to strip that out or format it differently or something, it's relatively easy to do. And so that was like a good balance between, for me, between a little bit of style and format, but keeping it mostly content and cruft mostly out of the way. But in this regard, I, I, I consider Vim and Emacs um, the same because you, the, the main point is, is to separate style and content, so, which is something you cannot do with word processors. Is there anybody here that uses a word processor uh, when, when writing blog posts or whatever? I actually use Windows Live Writer a lot because I can stick the images right in there and it's really <laughs> helpful because then I can resize the images and I can see how all the lines will wrap. So that's kind of nifty. <laughs> okay. okay, but you can't do that with uh, the, the GUI version of Emacs? Uh, you can you can inline images in org and I think org blog will actually publish them for you. But okay. this, this kind of dragging and dropping thingy, not so much. <laughs> ah, right. You can drag and drop the link, though. <laughs> yeah, goody. Anyway, um, so there's that. And then sometimes I'll write yeah. things in Evernote, and then I'll copy it into Windows Live Writer. And sometimes I'll write things in org, use org to blog to export it, and then paste that into uh, into WordPress's uh, interface itself. Right, right, right. Uh, uh, for me, it's pretty much a programming uh, way of writing, because I... I write in Markdown and use Jekyll to generate oh, yeah. uh, static yeah. files. So V totally works for that. It makes it work too, but I I'm a used to I'm used to V. Uh, I, but I already know the shortcuts. My my hand moves uh, alone. Yeah, uh, Lee. Actually, is it Lee or Lay? Um, Lee. It's Lee. Lee. Okay. What what do you use for blogging? I um I don't know. I I just. Uh, I guess I actually write it on paper first, and then I'm so new to this. <laughs> I uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of old school, I guess. <laughs> wow, I do paper. Like That's and I it. <laughs> I don't, I'm so shy about this guy. <laughs> That's okay, Lee. Yeah, so I'm so advanced in this. <laughs> Gosh, um, yeah, I I. I uh, I don't know anything about blogging at all, like not one thing. So <laughs> I basically learn everything I can <laughs> online and in the books. I'm always reading something. And so if that helps, <laughs> I don't know. I sound very similar to you. I, oh, good. You know, I'm not a coder, um, although I, I like... Uh, reading and learning about a lot of things including um, coding and software and I have a brother who is a software engineer and so uh, but I, I don't you know I don't know a whole lot I just uh, know that it interests me and so I keep 
you know, learning a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, and I stumbled on Sasha, and she's been really helpful. Yeah, I, I think I know about, it started with 5%, and I think it's gone up to 10% now. And <laughs> that's, how that helps. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, I, once I get into PHP and all that, then that's just, uh, it's gone. <laughs> gone, gone. So I don't know anything about programming or developers or anything like that. I'm actually a graphic artist, so. <laughs> that's cool. Why, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I find it just, uh, because uh, I identify with other interests that typically people who code uh, have similar interests. They're just geeky and nerdy like I am. And so I, I find inspiration from people who write code, although I, I can't do it. I just, I'm just not built to write code, but, uh, um, but I find inspiration from people who do. Right. I couldn't write code before I, st I learned it. <laughs> well, I, I've made attempts. Let me say, I've, I've made attempts, and I have written some code. It's just, uh, it doesn't, you, you know, I see, I know people who just like it. You know, they get into it, and, and that's what they like to do. Uh, and I, uh, while I, while I have a great deal of interest and respect for it, it's just not my natural inclination. There is also a very different um, approaches to uh, teach coding and some some um, some approaches are just unfit for, for some people not not every approach is is, um, is conducive to uh, to transmission of, of knowledge um, and there is a huge differences in, in teaching uh, coding uh, and and I would say that today in the industry uh, coding is, is is taught in a manner which is not conducive to to learn um, Fortunately, yeah. it's not a prerequisite for uh, for blogging or sharing what you're learning yeah. or doing yeah, all sorts of interesting things. <laughs> That's true. Although I, I'm, I, I'll, I'll right? keep learning though. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, and I, one of the things that I want to to get better at is is packaging all these things that people want to learn um, or want to learn more about. Uh, into, I don't know, videos or screencasts or courses or whatever. So learning code might be a really big thing, but if people have questions, I'm always happy to set up a Google Hangout session or Skype screen sharing <laughs> thing to help out. Well, I will say that I think possibly a, uh, a good guide, a good written guide, would be a nice thing to have because I find very, very strange that knowing how to read is sometimes seen as a disability or, or, or a problem nowadays with all these videos that purport to give you information but don't really. And so I'm still a big fan of the written word. Um, obviously, we're talking about blogging. And um, it would be good to see, have a, a very simplistic outline of the things that we've our experience. Okay. Yeah, it's quite hard to skim through a video. So, and in a blog post, you can uh, you you read the blog uh, the entire blog post. Later, you want to to reread some part. You can jump straight into that part. And in a video, it's quite hard to find the the specific second where there's that information you want to see again. So I think uh, reading and reading is much faster than than watching a video. Uh, maybe sometimes a thirty minutes video, I can read a blog post in five minutes or ten minutes at most, and get the same information. Fantastic! So I will continue with the strategy with the of strategy being lazy, not being doing lazy, videos, not doing, doing videos, blog posts, doing maybe blog doing one-page one page visual summaries. Actually, is there a scratch pad, uh, like a, a written scratch pad we can use? Because we've all had a lot of really good ideas. It would be nice to have a common document or page or something that we put various notes into uh, to, as a start of this kind of uh, information mm -hmm. source. Oh, yeah, Google could Drive. Be share, share, yeah, on Drive, it could be. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. 
Ah, there we go. Ooh. Shared notes. All right. Um, I'm not sure where I am on the video or being broadcast here because <laughs> okay. I just see Google Drive hang in the middle on, of my hang screen. Hang on, hang on. Uh, create shared notes. Google Drive takes. Hang on, I'm clicking on create hang shared on. notes. Okay, All right, notes. So let's All see right. what happens. Let's see what happens. Uh, this is this is very I'm, interesting. I'm taking notes. Uh, the the notes people are uh, writing here in the right side chat. I'm taking notes. Uh, uh, I'm noting <gasps> the the links and uh, everything. I'm copying a text document. Uh, I can share it with you. Okay. Because after the hangout, this text chat is gone. I'm really curious though how to use the the Google Drive and that way there's collaborative access so that even after the uh, hangout is over you could go back and add or, or you know it could be a living document after that point. Okay, Sasha, are you actually editing a document right now? I think so. At least Archie seems to see it too. Okay, I see your face now. Let me click on Google Drive. And does anybody else see a Google Drive come image coming up, or is that just I me? Clicked on shared notes. I've got okay, something. Shared, shared notes. Okay. Ah, reasons, there we go. I see you. Okay. One of the reasons I'm really curious about this because is because I yeah. want to turn this into some kind of a regular habit or whatever. So I have tea parties every two months or so, and it'd be nice to have some kind of regular hanging out with people who I don't actually live in the city with. So uh, this is very exciting. All these capabilities. So when you when you click on Google Drive to the left on my screen, I had two little icons in the lower icon allowed me to start seeing what you're what you're posting. Right, me too. Yeah, I'm starting to see this now, the text. Although the online hangout, I do understand that. I've uh, been dating a woman in Pennsylvania for the past two years, and we get together about once a month, but most of the time it's Skype, you know, so. Mm. I think I lost my Google, Google. notes. Oh, there, it, hangout notes. Oh, there it is. Okay, okay, we're back. <sighs> okay. Yep, we Pat, we can see your word. Work. Okay, it works. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I see other people's um, names popping up on the screen, too. I guess where they're typing, their name pops up, or where their cursor is indented into the page. Uh, everybody stop talking. Stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ooh. I'm trying to uh, okay. summarize the best examples from this right side shot. Th this is really cool. Uh, I like I like this a lot. <laughs> I'm so glad we experimented with stuff like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, and and so you know, if, as you make connections in a in a setting like this, if you have something you're working on, you can put it in a share in a on in your Google Drive and then share it with people uh, from this group, and then they can go in and look at it and edit it, comment on it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So like, let's say you had a blog posting that you had written, drafted, and wanted somebody to look it over for you. Yeah, too bad I'm on my Linux box, otherwise I just dictate, dictate some stuff with speech. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, do, do you run Ubuntu on Linux? Or? Yeah, I run Ubuntu. Yeah. What, what I'm thinking would work really well is if I had a com proxy and I could export the com interface for speech recognition results outside of naturally speaking and port it onto the Linux environment and make it work there. Uh, but that's a project that <clears throat> needs some funding, if you know what I mean. Yeah, you just blew my mind. What you talking about? Excuse <laughs> me.
Okay, we're okay, about 10 minutes away from the end of the art, and I have, I'm having way too much fun. Uh, also, I'm watching my to-do list slash to-blog list grow step by step, which is good. This is one of the things I wanted to get out of this. Um, if we, if I were to have some, you know, oh, if we were to have something like this, maybe every month, something like that, how would you make yeah, I'd be it, up for it awesome? Yeah, I'd definitely be up for it. I would as well. You know, this stuff, uh, this um, shared documents, if we do it right, there's also comment capability, and we should be able to review others' posts. You know, if people want to make a post available for uh, commentary before we actually publish it, we could critique pieces and, uh, and help each other out with writing, Ooh. just like a writer's group. Ooh, I like that. Uh, let me see here. Can I try? Uh, you've got one document going here. Let me see if I go to my other machine and I see what I can dig up here. I've got some stuff I might be able to share that way. I like that. I've like I've, that. I've always been um, always curious about, curious you, know, about those, you know those those, those blogs, blogs with with blogs editors with and writing and groups and people who will actually people tell you when you when your writing is crap. Writing is crap. So. Uh, <laughs> oh, you don't want to say it that way. You want to say you might have some uh, you might have some editorial challenges that could use a rephrasing. Yes, um, there you go. Because I, when I write, I often take a lot of things for granted. So I'd love to you know poke at it with more questions and see if it makes sense to other people and all those other good things. It, it, if I write something that's crap, you can feel free to say that's crap. <laughs> just say uh, it won't bother me. <laughs> Actually, I really like the uh, the weekly reviews you've been posting, Pat, because you actually go into more detail in terms of time use than I do, so I probably should be doing something like that, too. Well, thank you. I probably put way too much time into writing those posts, but I'm, I'm enjoying it. Uh, <laughs> Can, uh, is it possible to share to a circle? Yeah. I wonder. That should not be difficult. Ooh, look, there's someone's mm -hmm. comment. There you go. Someone has. Huh. Mm, nifty. This is very good too. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, this is great. I, I th this has just made my right. Thank you. Here, let me, let me give you an example. Let me give you some example of something here, folks. Um, I just shared one of my stories. Uh, yeah. Did you find the ad button? Oh my god. Yeah. Did you find the ad button? Is that how you're sharing a story? Uh, I went to the sharing feature. Um, oh, I'm going to okay. post it here. I'm going to post it here in the comments section so that people can find it um, rather than the document. I just, I just noticed like on the left side again, uh, there was a little at the top oh, of did the I lose left something? side, there's a little expand sidebar uh, carrot. and. That's, you can add a document, I guess, that will show up on the screen. Oh, oh yeah, there's Archimedes just added something. He's at, his resume uh. is up. <laughs> nice. Hey. That's cool. This is great. I should definitely hang out with you folks more often. <laughs> Yeah, I'm having some mobility problems here. My hands are just not cooperating. Uh, let me see if I can find how to list my files. How do I do that? So, ah, there we go. So then, like Archimedes, uh, it, I, we, we could collectively edit his resume for him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, one of the things I'm curious about is, you know, starting to fill in that outline, right? Like some people, Trevor, I think you mentioned you wrote an outline. It would be great to outline stuff together. Did you just put the ride? Oh up yeah. Here? Yep. Yes, I did. Yeah, I see it. I see it. Yeah, I see that too. I see that too. Oh, come on. It's a ghost story. So this is one of your one of your fiction. Yes. Stories? It, it's a ghost story. Oh. Wow. Okay, I'm not going to be able to read and absorb and comment on this all in one go. Yeah, so we'll yeah, have to find someone to follow yeah. up. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I'm just saying, I want to give this to people, because if you want to try making comments on it, I think I opened it so it's available for comments, but I'm not sure how you do it from here. Um, maybe it's on the... Hey, maybe it's like, well, what, more. Yeah. What, one other question, when you click on Add, it brings up a little uh, Google Drive box, and it, the left side says Create Shared Notes, the right side says Create Shared Sketch Pad. Ooh. <laughs> I thought you might be interested. I don't know. Oh my! <laughs> I haven't used oh, yeah. uh, the, the sketchpad in Google. Oh, it looks like a drawing oh, sketchpad. Hang on, what's this? Uh, I can play with this. Just trying to connect. It, that's, there's some more. There's probably a drawing in here somewhere. This is, yeah. Doesn't look like it. Format. Neat format. Oh, it's. Oh, Does okay, lines scribble, only. Scribble, 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 scribble. Hello. Hello. Or scribble. Yeah. Shape, <laughs> scribble, image, <laughs> line color. Oh, Trevor's got a good oh, idea. Um, because we've been talking about uh, decision making and well, making better decisions uh, and getting through some of the really like the really dense research on this. Uh, so yeah, using this as a study group where people can read through and discuss stuff, I'd be up for that. <laughs> that would work. So I guess we should try and create a circle uh, for all of us so we can have a share yeah. to our circles. And the other, the other thing I'm curious about is, you know, trying to trying to start mapping out stuff that people are interested in and that I or somebody should write about. So it'd be great to, to collaboratively work on that outline. It's kind of like letting other people chime in in my editorial calendar slash book or whatever. <laughs> Oh my god. You can also uh, do screen share. Uh, so if you wanted to actually demonstrate you know, something on the, on your screen, we could see what you're doing. Wow. Yep. Yeah. That's a real good feature. Yeah. So and if I, if I remember correctly, because we have YouTube access here, we could watch movies together. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the uh, cute kitten videos? <laughs> Comment off to the side. <laughs> and that, um, and that latest uh, oh, wow. Leonard Nimoy, uh, uh, Zachary Quinto uh, Audi ad, which was actually really funny. Yes, it is hilarious. <laughs> so yeah, okay. So I, I am, I'm definitely up for hanging out with interesting people. I like this. It's, it's a good experiment. I get to overhear interesting conversations and hear people's questions and come up with stuff I didn't know that I knew. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, thumbs God. up for me, dude. Well, thanks for pulling oh. this together, Sasha. It's really great. Oh, thanks, thanks for all. Yeah, the thanks, Sasha. This yeah. was a lot of fun. So, so okay, a couple organizational yeah. things. Yeah. First off, are you going to give us a calendar, a monthly calendar notice, or how do we want to do that? Um, uh, second yeah. is, and second is, how do we build this common circle so that we can share stuff? Uh, Boggle. It's it, like... <laughs> uh, yeah, so about the circle, uh, I guess uh, one, one of us can build a circle with uh, other the, the attendees and can share the circle. Maybe put it in uh, this event page because everyone knows the, the address already. So uh, here's the chart circle from the last Hangout. Uh, I, so uh, after that, it's up to each one to add the circle. Sasha, so sounds like a good common point for that. Sounds like fun. Sounds like fun. I don't know how we're going to handle it in the future with uh, this limit of 10 people who can join in all the fun, but I'm sure we'll deal with it somehow. <laughs> There's actually an advantage to limiting the group size. That's true. That's true. You have more conversation. You know, developing trust, developing a, a knowledge of each other's history, and quite frankly, we, I haven't heard any trolls so far tonight, and there's no bridges in sight, so we're pretty safe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's going to be the first 10 who make it in. All right. Yep. Yeah, this format of uh, 10 people and sharing to YouTube is, is nice. Uh, and it's the common way I see in the in other hangouts. Uh, 
the only way to have more than 10, more than 10 people is uh, when there is someone from Google because they can use internal tools and their internal tools allow more than 10 people. But then chaos. Uh, I know that. <laughs> Is there a way to see the names of all the people that, uh, were, the 10 that, that got in and then the other people that, that were just listening in? Well, the easiest way yeah, is to just get is. people to say hi in the chat and then you can pick up the names from there. Well, actually, you can hope you put your mouse over the picture. If you yeah, yeah. mouse over, over, you can see the name. Also, well, there is well, this, uh, at the left side, there is a hangout to box. And using this hangout to box, uh, you can put your name so it appears in the video, much like the the news. Yeah. And there's the name of the reporter, the journalist. I was just thinking that there might be a way that it that it automatically tracked, you know, or had a list somewhere of here's all the people that signed in or, or attempted to sign in. I've got it in my recording, so I can set up the circle uh, and then get tips from other people and have to set up the circle correctly, but yes! <laughs> I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll all work it out. Oh, hey. Is that how you got your name to come across the screen in the toolbox? Yeah, down the bottom. Just roll over the bottom. It's off. There you go. Now it's on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh okay, okay, cool. Wow, okay, uh -huh. we are learning a lot of interesting things today. <laughs> Hi! Sorry, uh, sorry, uh, Chang, Chang Liao, uh, it sort of took a while for you to be able to join. Um, uh, turns out Hangouts are limited to only 10 people. I'm so sorry about that, but we'll figure out something out for next time. Nice. Okay. Thank you. So it's it's basically going to, be, going to be a monthly chat. First ten people, first ten people, first twelve people, twice week. First ten people who make it into the, the call, make it into the call. <laughs> Whoa. Boy, that that sets up a call to get there on time, yeah. if not early. <laughs> I can't hear you yet. Um, if you want, you can go ahead and try speaking up, and we can test your sound. Nope, no audio. Okay, uh, in the meantime, thanks so much for coming. Um, what, I'll, what we'll probably do is we can, you know, I, I am up for having close groups like this and then having that kind of drop in first 10 people, maybe I'll end up hanging out with people twice a month. Buckle, I'll work up for that eventually. Uh, and, um, and we can see how that goes because I, I really like this and, um, and lo I'd love to keep learning. Aww. I like the little name banner because then when you talk, your name pops up and, and you, your head pops up and you can see your name. Oh, that's a good idea. I well, I'll, I'll include that next time in some in the kind of setup instructions. Yeah, I'm not sure how you do that, but okay. Yeah. In the toolbox. To your left, you see a Hangout toolbox. Uh, I see chat, screen share, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's a Just keep one, two, three, four, oh, five, hang on two six, box. Got it. Yeah. yeah, and then there, play around with those features in there. It's, if you do a custom oh. overlay, I haven't played the with first that button has a uh, has lower third, and you need to toggle yeah. it on. I get to give a bunch of permissions first. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah, my uh, ad block software is perfecting the uh, hangout toolbox at the moment. I'll. Uh, Make that a little less restrictive for the next hangout. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Okay. I am. I am decidedly less nervous about doing this kind of online thing. Um, I will follow up with a blog post. And I are, are folks okay with this rather random sounding recording? <laughs> okay. It's, Why is this? Was, was fun. <laughs> it's nice. Uh, okay. 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 Okay, I'll, okay, I'll post that on I'll YouTube and um and naturally have a blog post about it, and I will also add the other things that we talked about to my to blog list. Thank you again so much for time, attention, insights, helping me not panic too much, generally being awesome. 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you, Sasha. Good to see yes. you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right then. Keep you folks around. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, bye-bye.